Hey boys and girls, Square One Art is our next project. We will create artwork that is a square rather than a rectangle. I'll mail those artworks away and later we'll have the option to order products with your image on the product. Here is a coaster for keeping your table protected. There are stickers. There's tiles. You could order a mouse pad with your artwork on it. And there are a lot more products available to order. Today, let's focus on creating something wonderful that can be reproduced by Square One Art for a fundraiser. The fundraiser will allow us to buy more and better art materials. Today we are going to work on creating a Gond inspired work of art. We've got a guided drawing to create either a fish or a bird and I'll demonstrate how to draw the fish. If you feel so bold you may try and follow the bird drawing guide instead. I drew with oil pastel and I also drew white lines in my background with the oil pastel. You couldn't see them until we painted a wash of blue using liquid watercolors. I learned about repeating lines to create patterns like these scales or these stripes. Even these wave lines repeated creates a pattern. And some art from India. Our format for the picture is going to be this square. Above the line is used to fill in some information, but below the line, this is the square for our creating. Lines and dots are really the main decorative elements in the patterns of a Gond work of art. So I'll be using lines and a few dots to decorate my fish. If you are so bold and would like to try and draw a bird instead of a fish, well, I'd encourage that for sure. But I'll be following this instruction and drawing my fish. I want the fish about this big, so I'm sort of marking where the tail would be and where the head would be. Now, if I come in off the page for me, this is about half of my finger. Right there is a good spot for the eye. So I'm going to make a dot for the eye. And I'm using a black crayon to start with. And now I'll just make a second circle around that fish eye. And that's where we begin. So the head, the body, the tail. And I don't want all my art to go right up to the edge for this project. We want to leave a little bit of a margin on the edge of our drawings. Now the next thing is to make a head curl like a U on its side and below, sorry, after we've made this U shape Come across the paper, if you're joining me, come across the paper and we'll make a little mark for the end of the body before we start the tail. We need a little room for those curling tail parts. So here's the end of my tail. And now I can take this and with a little bit of an S shape, connect to the U which makes my head. And now from the bottom of this tail, I will come down and I'll make another little U and go up to there. We could make a second line here. Find the middle of your tail and divide it with a short line. These are kind of like fish hook shapes. They curl in. 
and then we can connect with a S-shaped line to the outside there from the edge of the tail around and back in an S shape. So there's my fish tail and the body. I'd like to add a separating line for the head and double that up so we have a shape we can paint. And there are four fins on this design. So I'll make two on the top and two on the bottom. This is a pretty good start for my fish. It's time to add some patterns. I've switched to an oil pastel, which will help to keep the paint from crossing over. You may like to use an oil pastel instead of a crayon to do your beginning drawing. Now I'm going to add some lines on my fish to create some patterns. Repeating the same line again and again helps to create a pattern. I decided to do some dots on my fins. And now we're left with the background. I'd like us to use white oil pastels to do some lines in the background. You can choose any line. Just try to repeat the same line again. It could be a wave line or an up and down bumpy line, or it could be a straight line. We're not going to get out the rulers, of course, but uh, fill in your background with some white lines. They may be hard to see until we add the paint. I have finished the lines, and now it's time for me to paint. I'm only going to use a few colors. I've got a light blue in the liquid watercolor, which I'll use on the outside of my fish to uh, cover those lines. I'm not sure yet what to do with the body, so since I haven't decided yet, I'll start by doing what I know I'm going to do. I've got a container with water in it, a paper towel, a brush, and I'm on the messy mat already. These are the things I need in order to paint. The messy mat, water, brush, paper towel, and some liquid watercolor paint. Always get my brush wet first. I dip the paint and wipe any extra color off on the edge of the container. And now my brush is loaded with paint. I'm going to start up close to my fish body, knowing that I did a crayon drawing first. I want to be a little bit careful about these edges. I don't want to come in and accidentally paint over my fish with the blue because that's not my plan. My plan to leave the fish another color. But the water here is going to be blue. This watered down liquid watercolor paint is a light blue. 
which is just fine for this type of artwork. We don't need the strongest colors imaginable. You might notice I'm really laying my paintbrush down on the paper, kind of flat. I'm still petting it gently like a kitten, but I do use a lot of paint to cover a large area, and so I'm keeping my brush down flat. I'm going to turn and try to keep my brush marks in the same direction because I'm an artist and I don't want to change that and make my art look scribbly. This paper is not watercolor paper, so it can only really handle one layer of color. We don't want to paint a lot in the same place or our paper might have holes in it. Our color might look splotchy. You can see my brush marks, so I'm glad I decided to keep all of my brush marks going in the same direction. That's called craftsmanship. To pay attention to those kinds of details and to use my tools in a way that makes my art look great. I'm not the neatest artist in the world, but I like to make my paintings look the way I planned them. That means I have control over my tools. I know how to use them. I dip and wipe my brush to clean it off. I try not to tap my brush because that would sprinkle on somebody else's paper. I'm going to let that dry and think a little bit about which color to use on the body, the tail, and the fins. I have switched to pan watercolors. This is a liquid watercolor. These are pan watercolors. And they're arranged in a rainbow order with a magenta or red violet. Red, orange, yellow, green, and then there's a light blue, a dark blue, and a violet. And you could call this darker blue indigo. Now my indigo is almost gone, and I'm not planning on using it. But if I wanted to, I could add just a little water, and that paint would activate. There'd still be some there. I think for the fins of my fish, I'll use orange. So I'm loading my paintbrush with orange paint. I have to wake it up or activate the paint by water and brush. Just sort of press on that orange until it becomes paint. And now I'm going to paint over this whole fin with orange. And the watercolor paint is not able to cover the oil pastel. So I can paint right over top of my patterns. Easily done. This style of artwork works best when we limit our color choices. Right now I have two. I might go with four colors, but I'll stop at four. If you have more than four colors on your artwork, it's not going to look like a Gond-inspired artwork anymore. It's going to look a little too busy with color. And I think I'll choose to leave the face of my fish white. I'm going to load my brush with green now by adding water to the green pan and activating the paint, tickling it, waking it up. 
and I want a light green on my body, so I'm actually going to put water down first. Some of you remember how to control your watercolor paints by putting water on your paper first. That tells the paint where to go. Where it's wet, the paint will travel. Where it's dry, well, the paint won't go there unless you drip or place your brush there. So now I've got water, and I'm going to load my brush with green and drop it in and watch it spread. Again, I put the water down first, hoping to get a lighter green so it wasn't a real strong color. And I think I did that. You can see the green is going everywhere. But only a little. I'm dipping and wiping my brush as I change colors. I'm drying it off on a paper towel. So I have three colors and maybe one more would be enough. This yellow is nice and bright. Somebody must have been taking good care of their paints to keep that from getting contaminated. I think my artwork is finished. The only thing left to do is to sign it.